everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we're going to be doing another installation in my character examination series where I analyze different aspects of a major character from the Wheel of Time. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of my absolute favorite characters in all of the Wheel of Time, everyone's favorite brown eyes Sedai, Baron Mathwin. Before getting too deep into the video, let's go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning. This video will carry a spoiler warning of red, meaning I will be talking about things that happen all the way through the final book of the series. If you have not finished the series, hold off on watching this video until you finish the final book. You have been warned. So as with all of my character examinations, we're going to be breaking up the video into 10 sections, each taking a look at a different aspect of Varen's character. Those sections are history before the story, actions during the story, appearance, personality, special abilities, notable possessions, relationships, greatest moments, what happens after the story, and the overall impact or role in the story. At the end of the video, I'll give you my analysis of her overall story arc and whether I believe she was executed as a character well. So let's dive into our analysis of Varen Mathwin. Varen Mathwin was born in the city-state island of Far Matting in 849 of the New Age. She was engaged to be married at the age of 15 to a man named Edwin, but before they could be married, it was discovered that she could channel and she was banished from the island as channeling is outlawed in Far Matting. Varen arrived in Tarvalon in 864 of the New Age at the age of 15 and began her training to become an Aes Sedai. She spent five years as a novice and six years as an accepted before being raised to full Aes Sedai and joining the Brown Aja. She had a great love of learning and was driven to learn as much about everything as she could. By 929 of the New Age, after being Aes Sedai for nearly 54 years, Varen's interest had taken her to studying the Black Aja and the Servants of the Shadow. She came very close to discovering some Black Aja members within the tower, but was subsequently caught, and to cover for her inquiries and to save her own life, she joined the Black Aja, deciding to use this as an opportunity to study the Black Aja from within. At some point during her time as a member of the Black Aja, she bonded her warder Tomas, another Dark Friend who had wanted to get out of service from the Dark One. She offered him the ability to fight the Dark One by helping her study the Black Aja from within, which he accepted. Baron spent much of her time as an Aes Sedai traveling the world studying various things such as portal stones, odd phenomenon, Taviran, the world of dreams, and doing her research on the Black Aja, which was her life's work. Twenty years prior to the start of the story, she was present for Moraine Damadred's raising to Aes Sedai. During the story, Varen is one of the 14 Aes Sedai who accompanies the Amarlin seat, Swan Sanche, as she meets with Moraine and Rand in Faldara. She correctly guesses to both Swan and Moraine that one of the three Taviran boys is the Dragon Reborn, almost causing the Amarlin to detain her before deciding to bring her into their trust. When Faldara is assaulted by Shadowspawn and the Horn of Valir is stolen, Varen decides to follow the three Taviran boys rather than returning to Tarvalin with the rest of the Aes Sedai. Here is where she leaves the first of a couple clues that could have let us know as readers that she was of the Black Aja. She claims to the boys that Moraine asked her to accompany them on their search, but we later find out that Moraine did not do this, hinting that Varen may have lied. Varen travels with the main Shinaran group with Matt and Perrin when Rand is separated from the rest of the group after traveling to the portal world. The groups end up reuniting in Kyrian, and Varen accompanies Rand to the Lord Barthenis party to recover the horn when they discover that Fane was traveling the ways. She gives Rand hints about how to activate portal stones due to her study of them, and once they reach Falma, she sends Rand, Matt, Perrin, Ingtar, and Hurin to recover the horn and Matt's dagger from the Shanshan. After Rand defeats a Shamael in the sky over Falma, she brings Elaine, Egwene, Nynaeve, and Matt back with her to the White Tower. She is then part of the group of ten Aes Sedai that severs Matt's connection to the Shadar Logoth dagger. She is ordered to help Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve in their search for the Black Aja, and she gives Egwene the Sleepweaver Tarangrial that allows the Channeler to enter the world of dreams. We later learn that Varen was ordered by the Black Aja to give nonsense notes to make sure the girls weren't helped, but she gave Egwene the ring in secret to help her. Varen then travels to the Two Rivers region, searching for other women who can channel with Alana Mosvani. Together, Varen and Alana discover many girls who can channel the One Power, including Boda Cawthon. But they become trapped there after the White Cloaks invade the Two Rivers region and block their exit, as well as the Shadow Spawn attacks throughout the area. Varen helps Perrin and the Two Rivers people defend themselves and takes part in the Battle of the Two Rivers. After leaving the Two Rivers with the girls that can channel, 
and then learning of the division in the White Tower, Varen sends the new novice girls to Saladar and sides with the rebel Aes Sedai. She then meets with Rand and Camelin. After Rand flees to Kyrian, she decides to follow along with Alana, and she meets Perrin on the way and stays with him until the Battle of Dumai's Wells. She fights in the battle and is forced to swear an oath to Rand after the successful outcome and rescuing of Rand from the White Tower Aes Sedai. In her way of serving Rand, Varen uses a very weak form of compulsion that she knows on some of the Tower Aes Sedai ensuring that they will serve him until the last battle. Varen joins with Cadswain, attaching herself to the legendary Aes Sedai, attempting to determine what Cadswain's intentions are. She determines that Cadswain does not intend to hurt Rand while they are visiting Farmatting, as Rand hunts the rebel Ashaman. Varen was prepared to poison Cadswain's tea, but decides not to after deciding that Cadswain could be trusted. Varen then takes part in the Battle of Shadar Logoth while Rand cleanses Sidene. She is linked with an Aes Sedai Kumira, and the Windfinder Sharon Din Tovar Morningtide. They fight Grendel and force her to flee, but Kamira is killed. As Rand recovers in Tyr, Varen departs but leaves Rand a letter telling him that he can trust Cad Swain but no other Aes Sedai no matter what oaths they've sworn. She then attempts to travel to Tar Valen, but due to Matt's Tavir and Pole, she is unable to travel and ends up skimming to the wrong place. She leaves a letter with Matt and helps him and the band travel to Camelin. The letter that she leaves with Matt was a warning to have the Waygate in Camelin watched and destroyed as the Trolloc army was moving through it. Matt never did open the letter and the Trollocs invaded and destroyed Camelin. Varen then traveled to the White Tower and meets Egwene, who is still in her captivity in the tower. She tells Egwene that she had been Black Aja and informs Egwene of her lifelong work of learning everything about the Black Aja and the forces of the Shadow. She gives Egwene her research as she drinks poison to kill herself. She had been unable to betray the Shadow until the very hour of her death and used this loophole to reveal to Egwene everything that she had learned. In terms of appearance, Varen is very short, only about five feet tall, and she's very plump. She's often described as being very grandmotherly. She has an ageless face, as all I said I do, but she has brown hair with touches of gray throughout showing her age. She often appears to be lost in thought and oblivious to her surroundings, although this is really more of an act. She's quite aware and uses the idea that brown Aja members are lost in the clouds to her advantage many times. <laughs> Varen is a member of the Brown Aja and is devoted to knowledge and the pursuit of it. As with most Brown Aes Sedai, she can come across as lost in thought, sometimes going off on random tangents while in conversation, but unlike most other Browns, this is really more of an act. Varen is very sharp and very insightful. She sees a lot more than she lets on and she's very, very observant. Her personality is very grandmotherly, as I said before. She's kind and helpful, although she does not show the strong ego that many other Aes Sedai tend to have. She is not, however, a pushover and can get angry and show her temper, as she did with the girls in The Dragon Reborn as they attack some White Cloaks. Varen's motivations are a mystery for much of the story, and our characters tend to understand this as her seeming lack of an ego and kindness make people suspicious of her and her plans and goals. <laughs> Varen is an Aes Sedai, and she is at an above average level of strength in the One Power, although not considered among the strongest. She is of average skill in healing, and she states that she's not very strong at weaving with Earth, but she believes that she is as strong as they come in delving, and that's really to find out what's wrong with someone. Varen is strong enough to travel and does possess the knowledge to do so, but cannot open large gateways without assistance from an Angriol. As I mentioned, Varen knows a very weak form of compulsion. Varen created the weave from piecing together fragments of Wilder's tricks that they had used to get what they wanted from people before they were trained as an Aes Sedai. She was able to formulate her crude form of compulsion from that information, but it has some limitations. The subject of Varen's compulsion must find a reason within themselves to obey her commands, and they must trust Varen for it to work. It also won't work at all on men. Despite these limitations, though, Varen is able to use this to get the Aes Sedai that swore fealty to Rand to fully submit to him. In addition to her ability to channel, Varen is very knowledgeable and very meticulous as a researcher. She has an insatiable curiosity, and her research into the Black Aja was vital to winning the last battle. <music> Varen possessed an Angriol that she carried with her for most of her life. It was shaped like a lily brooch and is a very weak Angriol. The Angriol is said to make her as strong as about the strongest female channeler. She was previously in possession of the Terangriol, the Sleepweaver, which allowed access to the world of dream. She gave this Terangriol to Egwene as Egwene was showing herself to be a dreamer. 
Varen has interesting relationships in that she seems to be operating as a loner for much of the story. She travels with Alana, but seems to have her own plans and own motivations. Her strongest relationship actually seems to be with her warder, Tomas, as they are both dark friends working as double agents. Tomas had wanted to leave the Shadow Service, but it is typically not possible for you really to get out of that life once in it. But Varen gave him the chance to spy on the Shadow for the Forces of Light. Varen has interactions with most of our main characters, but never appears to let herself get super close to any of them. Egwene does honor her for her sacrifice, though, giving away the information she gathered on the Black Aja over her 151 years of life. Varen's greatest moment, in my opinion, is her sacrifice and unmasking of the Black Aja during the Gathering Storm. She gives her research and information to Egwene right before dying to the poison that she fed herself so that she could betray the Shadow. We always knew Varen had her own set of motivations, but it was so amazing to finally see her character and the mystery around it unveiled. Her big reveal gave all of her actions to this point more backstory and depth, and it was excellent food for thought if you go back and reread. Well, what happens after the story? Well, this one's fairly easy in that she dies before the end of the last book. But I do believe that she will re have received some honors for what she did in sacrificing herself to reveal the Black Aja. She will be remembered by Aes Sedai and her research will be used to analyze how the forces of Shadow had functioned, basically in a historical context. Varen played a very minor role throughout the story, never being much more than a side character that helped move the plot along. But her impact became major at the end of the books when she revealed that she had been researching the Black Aja and had secretly been among their ranks. Her reveal dealt a major blow to the Shadow and solidified the White Tower against the Shadow by removing the secret Black Sisters that would have been able to sabotage the forces of light in the last battle. The Shadow lost many of its best tools due to Varen. She could have even had a greater impact for the Forces of Light had Matt opened the letter she had left and saved Camelot. So what do I ultimately think of Varen? Well, I love her as a character. As I said earlier, she's one of my favorite characters in the series because I love that you never really know where her allegiances lie, but yet she ends up having one of the biggest hero moments in the series. Self-sacrifice is always impactful, but the way it plays out here and the impact of her sacrifice make her incredibly endearing to me. So that's it, my character examination of Varen Mathwin. What do you think of Varen? Where does she rank among your favorite Wheel of Time characters? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to both like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying my content. Make sure also to check out my Patreon page for some cool Patreon-only content as, and as well join my Discord server so we can engage more in, in a more direct way. Hey guys, until next time, take care everybody. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?